Hey guys, welcome to this exciting episode, and I'm telling you, it's exciting. You longtime subscribers know that when I have my slick Oklahoma shirt on, you will leave this episode in complete and utter disamazement. For those of you that don't know that well, y'all should have subscribed to me much earlier, and that's on you. All right, if y'all look around, you're going to be able to see that there are no cigar box guitars in the picture here, or in the scene. And so this is not going to be about cigar box guitars or a guitar made out of a bedpan. Anyway, back to reality. You don't see any junk guitars. Well, there's one right here, but again, that's out of the shot of the camera, which I set up very carefully. Okay, let's get the housekeeping out of the way early. Give me a like down there. I'll screw it up. Wherever that thumb is, the thing that looks like this, give me one of those. Uh, send me an email comment. Make your comment. Um, go ahead and display whatever kind of problem you got all over the internet for everyone to see and have it show up on a job application five years from now. Go ahead and do that in the comment section down there. But let's get that helicopter flying by out of the way. First, while we're doing the matchbook of the episode, hey, matchbook of the episode is matchbook advertising. It's everywhere. Believe me, I see it everywhere. It's everywhere. Look around you. They're watching you, dude. Anyway, right here. They wouldn't print this if it couldn't be true. People do read matchbook advertising. And it says right there, you're doing it right now. Right? Right? Yeah. Okay. So, if you believe this, I got some other stuff you're going to believe. Like every arch top that you find in the newspaper for a hundred bucks has a great deal of promise right well let's take a look at what i'm going to show you and we'll figure that out this episode is about bridges bridges are going to tell you a ton about a guitar um and if you know how to look at the bridge you're going to find out is this guitar fixable what's been done fixable repairable whatever word you use in the state you're in i'm usually in the state of confusion when i make these videos but anyway back to the bridges i'm going to show you some guitars and we're going to look at what the bridges can tell us and then we're going to look at what if we want to put a bridge on a guitar where one has been removed uh, how do we set the intonation how do we match the bridge to the guitar are there any structural issues with doing this wrong that either you're going to create by uh, repairing a bridge or by buying a guitar that has a bridge on that somebody hasn't done this stuff and then you're going to end up with a cracked arch top and you're going to go i should have listened to ken and everybody's always like you know what i can't believe you don't we all do so that said let's rock and roll okay guys before i get going I'm going to tell you, I own the guitars that I'm uh, going to show you. You're going to see them show up possibly in episodes where I hot rod them up, meaning I'm going to put a pickup on them, uh, put matchbooks on the neck, do some stuff to it, uh, and make them unique, and they will be for sale if you run across me at a blues festival or something. But anyway, there's a couple of episodes and pl um, playlists, there we go, Rented Lips playlists, that talk about these arch tops and one of them is uh, Worms Guide to Cheap Arch Tops. I go through and show you what some of the stuff you want to watch out for on these things is uh, and that's an, a playlist popping up right up there. Then uh, there's one where this guitar behind me, the Archcraft guitar that we've done binding and stuff to, that is in another playlist and you're going to see the repairs that we did to that in a playlist up there right about now so whenever that eye pops up when you hover your mouse up over the top uh, right corner those videos and playlists pop up for you and they're meant to help you so let's go to the first guitar that we're going to have a look at and it's this u.s strad made by the uh united states guitar company um somewhere i think in uh, New Jersey about 1950 something now when you look at the back of this thing there's a couple things you see that um, you got different tuners on this thing so somebody's pieced this together but what I liked about it 
other than this drop of glue right here that's running down here it means somebody repaired a crack which I can't see uh, to tell you but it's in pretty good shape it's a it's a cheap guitar it has no binding uh, but it's pretty solid um, it, it's got the holes in it for the pit guard and and the string action look at that that's that's pretty incredible um, so this is one that's going to be hot rotted up now let's go to the next one okay the next one here is an aria it's an import guitar this one come with a gold package um, I never really did care for that much, you know, putting $4,000 worth of gold trim on a Toyota Celica, if that's your thing. I got a, uh, a guy that wants to sell you a bedpan guitar, but this one's pretty clean. And what I like about this one, again, the action on the neck looks great. Um, it's got a pit guard. Um, there's no cracks in the body. There's a little tiny blemish right over here somewhere, but this is an arch top. And it looks to have pickups on it, or a pickup on it. I don't think it started life that way, because if you look real close at this, this pickup is one of those that's got the brackets that bolts to the neck, the side of the neck. And they drilled two little holes to run the wiring off here, and then hit all the electronics, the controls, behind the pick guard which is up on this bracket right here but this is an awesome guitar neck is fine binding is fine it presents really well so that's guitar number two all right meet guitar number three um, it is a harmony monterey i love this guitar um, it's old um, it came straight out of a luthier shop in um, ventura and I traded a Brownsville uh, Les Paul looking thing that I had for about an hour and a half for this thing uh, because as soon as I saw it on the wall I said this is mine it's got a deep sound big body guitar it was set up a um, couple little tiny issues with the binding that have been repaired right there but the neck is great nothing significant about the body that stands out it's been played um, Look at the action on that. Everything is cool. Looks to be all the original hardware. But all of these three guitars have something in common. What is it? Can you tell me? I know. Maybe it has something to do with the bridge, right? That's what this episode's about, right? All right, let's take a closer look. All right, we're back to guitar number one. Um, you saw it this way, but did you see it this way? Look at that bridge. Look how high the thumb screws are set up. And look how that bridge is leaning forward like that. I also want you to look, where's my pointer? Right here. Can you see that there's lighter wood there? And it's in a line like the bridge used to be down here. You see that? That's guitar number one. Hey, remember Guitar 2 with this Toyota Celica Gold Package? Nice guitar, right? Ooh, look. Can you see that? Look at that bridge. Exact same thing. Thumb screw set up really high. Bridge pitching forward. Now this one's actually pitching backwards. The nice thing about this one, if there is a nice thing, is there's no shadow right here that says that the bridge has been moved one way or the other. And here they are. Meet Bachelor number three came, comes out of a guitar shop in Ventura, California. Anyway, whatever that was. We're back to bridges. Look at this one. Oh, it's not. Thumb screws aren't set up. Doesn't have any thumb screws. See that? No thumb screws. What's up with that? Um, how is the bridge in terms of straight? Oh, it's straight. Straight as an arrow. But how many roller bridges came with stock Harmony Monterey guitars? Um, how about zero? Um, is this a good bridge? Yeah, it is because you can adjust the height of it if you had thumb screws. Uh, you could also uh, set the intonation by running these individual pieces up and down. Yeah, this is great, but 
it's not the original bridge. So what's the big deal? Well, let's get to the bench and I'll talk more about that there. Let's go. Why would somebody take a bridge off an old guitar? Well, if you're slick, like you're from Slick, Oklahoma, you might know that this bridge right here is made out of Bakelite. Let's say maybe this guitar is cracked, maybe it has a broken neck. Maybe you tell somebody, I'll give you 50 bucks for it, they're all happy. And then the first thing you do is pull the tuners off, pull the neck off, and uh, the tailpiece, because that hardware is worth 100 bucks by itself, typically, if it's in good shape. But the real winner here is this Bakelite bridge. Have you ever tried to buy a Bakelite bridge for an arch top? People are asking 200, 100. I've never seen one below $60. So, if you've got something like this that's of this uh, uh, vintage and it's missing a Bakelite bridge and you see that something's been moved here, that's a warning sign to you that something's not right and you want to pay attention to that. Next, we know from an episode I did about intonation with cigar box guitars, I will give you a link to that right up there, that measuring from where the nut meets the fretboard down to the 12th fret, the middle of the 12th fret doubled is where your bridge should be. Now, let's say that I buy a guitar from, say, Japan, and it's been stripped down or never put together because it's factory second or something, maybe like this one, and there's no evidence that it's ever had any of, of its gear because none of the holes have been drilled for the wires or anything. That's a pretty guitar. You're going to see this one show up. It's going to be junk piled out. But there's never been a bridge put on here. You can take a yardstick, again put something up here, butt the yardstick up there, and then take a piece of blue painter's tape, and once you know what the 12th fret mark is, you can come down here and put the mark there on the, on the stick, and then use that as a reference while you're completing all this. But anyway, if you have a guitar that has had the bridge changed out, and you don't know where the original bridge was, or you see a shadow and the, the shadow is a different width than the bridge, you may have constant intonation problems because, again, it's double the measurement from the back of the knot at the fretboard to the 12th fret times two. Now, remember the guitar I showed you that has the roller bridge? You can do the individual strings by adjusting where the individual string meets the bridge. You also pe see people turning uh, bridges at a little angle to try to get that all right, but that's kind of what it is. So if your guitar is missing a bridge or has one moved, you always want to wa watch out for intonation problems. Finally, let's say that I put a brand new bridge on this one, right? Bakelite bridge, that way I can sell this one for $150 and no one will ever know right wrong I will know and um, I don't want to do that anyway let's say that I buy a bridge and put it on here so I'm gonna buy one of these rosewood bridges I've sent a bunch of you links to off of eBay I'm gonna plop that right on there oh it's a little bit wider than the one that's there now it's a little bit higher I can adjust all that everything's going to be fine it's got this gap right here where the, the stock one, I know the, I know the tail piece is in the way of your view here, but uh, hopefully that's it. This stock uh, bridge didn't have this gap, but that doesn't matter. So, you know what? It does matter because this bridge has been on this guitar for almost 90 years. And it's been through hot, cold, it's been through everything. And I think it came out of the factory this way. Um, so, does this bridge here, what's the likelihood that it matches the radius, or the, if it's got wows or whatever it has, that this, uh, this bridge has pushing down on 
this arch top. So you remember a little bit earlier, we were talking about, well, maybe somebody changed the bridge here. Um, so you always want to remember that if I go from the back of the nut, can you see that up there? Follow this. Up there, let me turn this just a little bit. There we go. Back of the nut. Not the front of the nut, not the center of the nut, but the back of the nut where the fretboard meets the nut. You measure between there and the 12th fret. It needs to be there. If it's not and there's a shadow or something here, yeah, somebody's moved it. Don't depend on it that the guitar is intonated right by the placement of the bridge being where you think it should be or just jumping right to the idea that every guitar is 25 and a half scale just because that's how I build mine. No. Before we move this guitar out of this shot here and replace it with something else, I want to ask you something. Do you think that this floating bridge is glued to the top of the uh, arch top? Answer no. It might be stuck after a while. The varnish might have heated up on the guitar or something. But it's not glued on there. So if I take the strings off, what's going to happen? And if this has been replaced, is there a shadow there for me to go on? No. So, what do I want to do? Well, I want to take a straight edge. If I'm going to do anything with the bridge. And I'm going to put it against there. I'm going to go all the way across. I'm going to hold it. And I'm going to take some of this tape... I'm going to put it right at the edge on both sides, like so. See that? Well, people will say, hey, well, what if the bridge is tilted? You know how sometimes people angle a bridge to get the right intonation? Doesn't matter if, the, if you put the straight edge. Doesn't matter if the bridge is like this or like this. You'll put tape at the edge. That way, later, you can find your reference point. If the guitar is intonated right by the placement of the bridge, you don't want to mess that up by wondering where the bridge went looking for shadows and things. And sometimes having the marks right here might get in your way, especially if you're going to do something like custom sand the base of the bridge to this arch top. And I'll show you that. So if we were to like put sandpaper here and go back and forth, and again, I'm going to show you how to do that in a minute. If you do that and your marks are right here, they're going to disappear. So put your marks out here on the edge of the guitar. That way you can line up your straight edge. You can put your bridge there. And then you can use your measuring stick to check where everything needs to be when everything goes back on. Okay, we've changed guitars again. This presents a new problem. This guitar up here, can we see it up there, does not have a knot. So how do I measure that? It's never had a knot on it. I can tell because the drilling on this has never been done all the way through for the wiring to go back into here. Uh, this looks like a body that's been stripped down, but it's never had anything on it. Now, how do I know how to measure this? Well, I can hold this up here and hope, you know, put my finger up here and feel and whatever. Well, guess what? I can take and lean across the camera and show that my diet during Y2K or COVID hasn't been that great. I can take a bone blank and a clamp, right? And I can clamp that up here and make sure that it's flush with the neck, like so. And then I can, once that's in place, then I can measure. Well, what am I measuring? I don't even know what I'm measuring. Well, I measure between the end of the fingerboard where it meets the knot and the 12th fret. So, in the case of this guitar, that is 12 and a half. 12 and a half plus 12 and a half is 25. So, where would the bridge go? If I was going to put a bridge on it, oh, I'll put it at 25 and a half because that's what I always do right no wrong it would go right here it's a 25 scale guitar right there now you know um, through the episodes I've done these are uh, a staple of mine and there's 
probably an episode float right up there about floating bridges and how I mount these on license plate guitars and cigar box guitars and even coffee can guitars. But you know, I take this piece off, jet this, run these studs through holes down in here. So this one is marked. You can see the center is marked there. The center is there. Everything is sitting here like so. I simply take this off, run the studs for these thumb screws down through holes respectively there. And then this sits here. I want you to notice that this has a radius because the guitars that these are made for typically have radius um, fretboards. They're not straight across like a cigar box guitar. I want you to notice that this flexes like so. Do you see that? So if this sits on an arch top and the strings press down and the top is curved, it does this. It doesn't have to do that on here. It sits flat and the strings mash down. And so this part isn't even really necessary. So that's why I can use these with some amount of success. Once these go in, there is pressure right there as this pushes down against here. So you want to think about that and make sure that your back up underneath. I typically uh, put some structure underneath the back side of this. And you all know that I use Camacho boxes which are much thicker than these. I mean these these boxes they say the, the tone is good and I got a piece of tape on here trying to get them ahead of myself. You can see that I've marked the center where everything goes. Um, just in case I have to do something like I was telling you to mark stuff up. But that, that wood is plied and it's pretty thin in comparison to what I usually use. Anyway, this is flat. This is not arched. Now, what if this were arched? And I've got this going on like so. But what if there were variations in the arch or whatever? And I just slap this on here and leave it sit there. Is that going to be good enough? Okay, guys, I am zoomed in on this Harmony Monterey that I got out of a shop. Um, it plays well. The string action is great. But I kind of want to show you a little bit about... Um, I, I told you when we introduced this guitar, as guitar number three, that this roller-type bridge is not the bridge that came on here. Furthermore, there are no thumb screws, which means that that's probably why the string action is low if we put thumb screws on there. But this bridge is typical. The bottom of that bridge is, is kind of like this one here. Um, these should be there, whatever. But it's set up nice. It plays nice. Now, I want you to notice the difference between the thickness of the lower part of this bridge and that right there. I also want you to notice that it's not uniform all the way across and how thick it is. So if I take this here and push this, I want to be careful so I don't mar this up, and push that there. That should be the same there. Well, it's not. I've got air floating between the top of, uh, I'm trying to use my pointer here, that there's air between there when there's none here. So that means that this is higher and or that's lower or something and there's air underneath here watch this I'm taking the thickness of this which is very little I'm not going to get into argument about the metric system sorry about the focus but if I stick this here it really doesn't want to go under there but over here look I can stick that all the way in to there over there so do you think that that this bridge is supplying even support all the way across this. Well, it can't be. So the idea is if I just slap a new one on here and call it a day and worry about whether these are too high or too low and do some uh, uh, filing on this and, and pulling the thumb screws out, I'm kind of missing the boat and here's why. Okay, we're back to our Patron box and there's no strings on here, but let's push down a little bit as if there were. Can I push anything under here as long as I push down uniformly? Can I put this under anywhere? No, the, the top of this is flat. And so if I'm pushing this down, what's happening to the way I'm distributing the load? Well, again, this isn't going to be here. So the load would be distributed here or here. And I think that what we have to worry about on these thinner boxes is when you start pushing load against the grain, say, for example, I were to do something like put 
the uh, hole for the stud here. And then I'm going to come up here and I'm going to drill another hole so I can put a sound hole here. And I got something to put it here. And I've got holes lined up running along the grain line. Have you all ever noticed that when I do my tail pieces, we're getting way off out in the weeds here, my tail pieces that I never put all four holes right in a row. I split them up or one's here, one's here like so. I don't want to have everything running in the same pattern and put a number of stress holes or stress points in the wood along one plane. I want to break those up if possible. So same thing happens on these arch tops. If I've got this up a little bit, wherever I've got air, wherever there's not air between here and here, that's where the load is being distributed. On these arch tops, you can crack your arch top by putting on a brand new bridge and not making it fit the curvature of the arch top. Remember, these things are old. Uh, one point might be high, one might be low, it might be warped or whatever. Those bridges that have been on those things have grown accustomed to that. And when you start applying new pressures, pow, you start getting cracks. Okay, so let's say it's time to go to work on this guitar here. And I'm going to set it up with a tail piece like this, which is going to mount in the middle back here. And uh, we've already determined that our bridge is going to be right in this area. I'm not going to um, redo that, but let's say it's right in this area here. And let's say I'm going to use this roller bridge, which is a pretty good deal. It matches everything here, and it's got adjustments so I can use thumb screws to set everything up or down or, and move uh, the different string points and correct the intonation and also raise them up or down so I can fine-tune everything right on this bridge. These roller bridges are nice bridges. Now let's say I've got this like this so I just slap it on there and we're good to go. Well this certainly this body certainly isn't as fragile sorry I had to can't lose my humor guys um, as uh, some of those older wooden arch tops I'm telling you but to make the point here here's kind of the deal if I look at this and I press down what's the chances that this is going to match this right out of the factory and the load is going to be distributed evenly across this well it's kind of slim and there's an easy way to fix that and customize this to make sure that this bridge fits the in intrinsic blah 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 the uniqueness whatever college word that I never you know how to use because I didn't go to college um, we would use to say this specifically fits this well of course we're going to make sure that the height of this thing is appropriate and all that and it may not be but once we get all that down we're going to make sure that this fits this the way it's supposed to Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is remember we would mark our spots where we can tie in together later with a straight edge. Let's get this tailpiece out of the way across here like this to know where our bridge is ultimately going to be. Don't forget to do that regardless of where you're working. Remember, your marks being up here might get screwed up and then you're going to be trying to figure out what to do. So. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take that pencil that we all set our necks, our nuts with. Remember, you lay it down, you grind it in half. Remember this? And we're going to take this, and this thing is going to tell us, based on the individual characteristic of how this is shaped, I can come across here and here, like so, and then look at this and see where I'm going to be high or low. Is it is Yeah, you see, that is a little bit thicker here than it is here. So that means that the body is a little bit different here. So how do we make this fit this? Well, we're going to get some 400 grit sandpaper, like so, and some painter's tape, like so, and we're going to make sure that this sits on here like this. We're going to tape this down like so, and then we're going to use this to sand it. How how does that work? Well, the body, this paper being as thin as it is, like so, will shape to this. We tape it down, we control the dust, and then we just simply 
back and forth like this until we can look with feeler gauges or eyeball it and say there's none of those uh, fit anything underneath it issues like we saw in that other guitar. So let me set this up for you quick. All right, guys, keeping 3M and other manufacturers of painter's tape in business, I have masked off everything, including the F holes and stuff, because I'm going to do some sanding here, and I don't want this stuff to turn up forever later and grittiness or whatever. Notice that I have also changed the color on the tape uh, where my straight edge will line up with ultimately the edge of my um, bridge is going to be um, based on the fact that we've determined this is a 25 scale, not a 25 and a half. So notice that I have taped this 400 grit down to the top of the arch top. And I have also taken tape like this, folded it in half, and put it at the edge here. Why? Because I do want to help my friend and yours, the world's smallest blower, do dust control as we go. Now, in all seriousness, uh, I am going to try to get a working angle, which is best for me, to take this and take it here and notice that I'm working for this area here and I am just going to take this bridge back and forth across the top of the arch top trying to center it up and you can see already that this part right here is high and that would show up on our pencil marks too but I'm simply going to again using this as a reference point go back and forth across this until such time as I start seeing some evidence that stuff is being sanded here and here. Now, if I say, let's say, for example, the sanding marks are all on this side or this side, I really could take this to a, a belt sand or something, but be really careful. You start using 60 grit and all that, um, you're going to start taking a lot off of this, but I can see from this side that there's some air under this side. So I'm just going to keep going on here. I want to make sure that that my guitar is stable. I'm starting to feel some something happening over here, but I'm just doing this back and forth. And sooner or later, this will ultimately be fit exactly to this guitar, the arch of this guitar's top. Again, don't let the dust get out of control, and that's where my partner comes in at. Ooh, look at that. It's as forceful as they said it was on TV. Okay, so let's go back to guitar number three. Remember I told you a little bit earlier that this didn't match here and this didn't match here? Well, you can tell that the wood isn't the same here as it is over there. The pointer's getting in the way. Uh, the thumb screw's being missing and stuff. Here's the bottom line. This guitar, while it was at pretty much at the top of the Harmony line being a Monterey, it was not <laughs> a $300 guitar. It might have been a $40 guitar. So the interest here is, is that it plays and that somebody didn't just throw this on here like so and call it a day or cut this down or do whatever. You can tell from the different thickness of the wood here here versus there, uh, that somebody actually took the time to measure out the scale and actually sand this bridge to match the top of this guitar. Now, so what's happening over here? There's not that much pressure over here. Stuff is popping up a little bit. Um, Ventura, California is not acting California. Things are are, are adjusting a little bit. I do want to say, I give credit where credit's due, Rob at Guitar 48, you're always honest with me and fair, and I appreciate your work. And this is the kind of fine tuning that I so much appreciate. So if you're in the Ventura area and you need a setup done, go see Rob at Guitar 48. Oh, hey, last thing, almost forgot. Speaking of Patron boxes, well, Patron 7000, perfect for a license plate guitar. Just thought you should know. All right, guys, there you go. Um, I hope this helped you out a little bit. If you're going to buy these guitars, to kind of look at it and, and 
you know, pay attention to what's going on with the grain. Are there cracks? Have has uh, the the bridge been changed? Um, is it? Can you see air? Can you see that it's been leveled out? Ask those kinds of questions. If you don't see cracks, I wouldn't be afraid of this. But you know, a little really fine sandpaper and masking off the top of the guitar and taking a few minutes to set the bridge to the guitar and making sure it's right is the first place you can start on making sure that your guitar isn't going to be cracked and then you're going into the intonation being okay as well and if you're going to get rid of the guitar you're, you're getting a good product and making it better and always remember the people that are selling these guitars they sometimes hear oh this is a great guitar um, I saw it on eBay it is it, you know I can make somebody do this doesn't mean that they're trying to be slick it just means they might not know any better if you run across one that's got some problems again inform the person and say hey here's kind of what's keeping me away from this one and here's what you might want to take a look at doing thanks for watching I know this has been a long one but I think this will help you out if you pay attention you also remember a lot of the things that I'm teaching you are things that I've had to learn the hard way and um, well, I got a good collection of guitars out of it, so I will see you next time.